Greetings fellow Dungeon Delvers, and welcome to Dorans and Dragons, where we work together to come up with Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition builds for your favorite League of Legends champions. Today we're building Sona, Maven of the Strings. Though Sona is commonly associated with Damasia, she was actually raised in Ionia by an order of monks. She was born unable to speak, but showed such powerful empathy that people often sought her out to alleviate their struggles and pain. Helping her to do that was a magical instrument she'd been left with at birth. She had a natural talent for playing the instrument and brought many to tears of joy. Once Noxus invaded Ionia, the monks took Sona to Damasia to escape the conflict. There she was taken in by the Buvel family, who adored Sona and encouraged her to play. Lady Lestara helped Sona discover her instrument was actually an etoile, a powerful magical artifact. Lestara was worried Sona might be accosted by the mage seekers and asked Sona to keep the knowledge of the artifact a secret. Sona respected Lestara and agreed to keep the secret. Sona went back to her homeland once Noxus had been defeated, but the conflict that had taken place had changed her people too much. She returned to Demacia, her chosen home, and spends her days attempting to bring comfort and brightness to the dark days. Before we get started with the build, go ahead and like the video and hit that subscribe button so you're always notified when we release our builds. We'd like to take a minute and thank our awesome patrons over on Patreon, who support us every month. Thanks for helping us keep the lights on and me weeping deeply at my desk trying to play ranked. One of our rewards for our patrons is monthly homebrewed content. This month's homebrew is the Smuggler's Port, based on Bilgewater. We're releasing last month's homebrew, The Hidden City, on a DMs Guild if you're interested in seeing that. Come join us over on Patreon if you're interested in supporting the channel and getting access to some great content. Alright, now let's get into it. Here's a quick preview of the build. For race, we're going with Variant Human. Per usual, our stats are going to be determined using the standard array. For our stat priorities, we're going to max Charisma and Dump Strength. We do have a multi-class requirement of 13 in Charisma. Our leveling path is going to be levels 1 through 3 in Bard, then going straight Sorcerer for 17 levels after. So in his passive, Power Cord is going to be listed with each related spell. Our Q, Him of Valor, is going to come from Guiding Bolt. Her W, Aria of Perseverance, comes from Mass Cure Wounds, Shield of Faith, and Enlarge Reduce. Our E, Song of Celerity, will come from Haste and Slow. And finally, we get our ultimate, Crescendo, from Psychic Scream. For race, it's no surprise, but we're going with a Variant Human. Variant Humans get to choose two ability scores to bump by one. We'll go with our Charisma and Constitution for pretty music and maintaining our concentration. Go ahead and pick up Persuasion as your skill proficiency so you can persuade people into better moods with your music. And finally, our free feet. We're going to go with Observant here because Sona is very empathetic and picks up on things others might miss. We get a free point to Wisdom, gain a plus 5 to our passive perception and investigation skills, and we can lip read as long as we understand the language. Background was a simple choice with Entertainer. This is going to give us proficiency with performance and acrobatics, which is a little silly for Sona, but hey, we'll take it. We also get the Buy Popular Demand feature which means as long as the etoile is a pluckin', you'll have somewhere to be a sleepin'. For stats, we're gonna try and find a similar balance to what Google does on its image searches for Sona with the standard array. Roll if you want to turn off safe filter, but keep at least a 13 in charisma for multi-classing purposes. We're going to get our etoile on with a 15 in charisma. Now that performances aren't happening without some nimble fingers, so we'll go with 14 in dexterity. Maintaining our concentration on things is going to take some constitution at a 13. Being raised by monks bumps our wisdom to a 12. All playing and no book reading makes Sona's intelligence average at 10. And playing a floating instrument all day means you skip leg day. And arm day. And all the days, so we'll dump strength. For equipment, the only thing we're going to need is Sona's etoile. Now, disclaimer, I'm not a musical expert in any way. But to me, the closest instrument of our options to choose from is the lyre, and your DM shouldn't care too much about flavoring it differently. Alrighty, let's kick off the build with some levels in Bard. Bards have a d8 hit die and a crap ton of proficiencies. Choose any three instruments you'd like, and we'll pick up Insight, Perception, and Arcana for our skills. Level 1 Bards are full casters, so they get their spell casting at level 1. We only have to cover the spells specific to the build here, and there aren't any crucial ones provided by the Bard levels, unfortunately. Though, feel free to pick up Vicious Mockery if you want to emulate all chat. Our final first level feature is Bardic Inspiration, 
which really fits the Sona support role well. You have a pool of dice based on your Charisma modifier that you can dole out to creatures other than yourself as a bonus action. These Bardic Inspiration die are D6s that can be rolled and added to any ability check, attack roll, or saving throw you make. Tasha's adds a feature that lets these also be used to increase damage dealt or hit points healed by spells, though you don't get that till level 2. Second level bards get jack of all trades. This gives you half of your proficiency bonus towards any skill you have no proficiency in already. We also get Song of Rest. During a short rest, you can play a melody on your etoile and to heal any allies using hit die by an additional d6. Level 3 bards gain expertise and choose their bardic college. Expertise is going to allow us to take two skills and double our proficiency bonus with that skill. We're going to choose Performance to make some music that would make Salieri weep, and Insight to further enhance Sona's empathy. In honor of the ancient magic that powers the Etzwal, we're going with the College of Glamour. This is going to give us two features. Mantle of Inspiration allows you to use your Bardic Inspiration die on yourself to gain a wondrous appearance. When you do this, you can affect a number of creatures equal to your Charisma mod, giving them 5 temporary hit points and the ability to burn their reaction to move their entire speed without provoking opportunity attacks. So when your ADC is getting pounded, you can just nope them right the heck out of there. Enthralling Performance gives you the ability to charm people who listen to you perform for at least a minute. They have to succeed on a wisdom saving throw at the end of the performance, or be charmed for an hour, unless you do something they wouldn't appreciate. Alrighty, now that we've got our etoile and we know how to use it, time to amp up the magic in our life with some levels in Sorcerer. Sorcerers have a d6 hit die and give us no new proficiencies. Sorcerers are defined by their sorcerer's origin, and for Sona we're going with Divine Soul. This is going to give us access to the Cleric Spell List, the Cure Wound Spell from Divine Magic, and the Favored by the Gods feature. Favored by the Gods gives you a second chance if you fail a saving throw or miss with an attack roll, letting you add 2d4 to the roll once per rest. We also get first level spells here, and two important ones to boot. Guiding Bolt is going to be our Q, Hymn of Valor. You fire off a blast of energy with a spell attack roll. It deals 4d6 radiant damage if it hits, and the next attack roll against that target has advantage. That's not exactly bonus damage, but a more likely chance to hit is close enough. Shield of Faith is going to be the shielding portion of our W. As a bonus action, you can cover a target in shimmering energy, giving them plus 2 AC while you hold concentration. Second level sorcerers gain their Font of Magic which is a pool of sorcery points we can use to either enhance our spells with metamagic, which we'll unlock next level, or convert to spell slots. Your sorcery point pool will be equal to your levels in sorcerer, and the spell slot conversion does go both ways. Level 3 sorcerers unlock second level spells and their metamagic abilities. Like we just said, metamagic is a way to enhance your spells. There are two metamagic options we think are important for Sona. Subtle Spell will allow you to cast your spells without somatic or verbal components for one sorcery point, which is perfect since Sona is mute. We'll also pick up Twin Spell here, which lets you manipulate any spell that has a single target and spend its level in sorcery points to target another creature as well. The spells you'll need to twin in this build for accuracy are Guiding Bolt, Shield of Faith, and Haste. Speaking of spells, we also get Enlarge and Reduce at this level. We're only going to focus on Reduce because that's the important one. Reduce is going to be the power cord of our W because it reduces the creature's size by half if it fails a con save, making its attacks deal 1d4 less damage. 4th level sorcerers unlock the first ability score improvement of the build. We like to cover all of the ability score improvements here so you can pick and choose at your leisure. This one is kind of vanilla, no feats, all stat bumps build. At Sorcerer 4, we're bumping our charisma by 2 and in Sorcerer 8, we'll max it with another 2 points. Finally, at Sorcerer 12, we'll bump our decks as well by 2 points, bringing it to 18. Level 5 Sorcerers get 3rd level spells. We have 2 to pick up here, Haste and Slow. Both are part of our E. Haste allows us to give a creature double speed, plus 2 AC, advantage on deck saves, and an additional special action on their turn. Slow is a 40-foot cube of lethargic energy that forces each creature in it to make a wisdom save or suffer the following. Half speed, minus 2 to AC and deck saves, and it can't use reactions. On its turn, it can either use an action or a bonus action, not both. Regardless of multi-attack or extra attack, it can only attack once during its turn. Finally, if it tries to cast a spell, it has to roll a d20. On an 11 or higher, 
the spell won't cast till next turn, and they have to use their action next turn to finish the cast. It's a pretty strong spell. 6th level Divine Soul Sorcerers gain Empowered Healing. Anytime you, or an ally within 5 feet, are rolling to determine how much HP a spell returns, you can spend 1 sorcery point to reroll any of the die once. Alright, now Sorcerer has a bunch of puffy levels with nothing going on for us, so we're skipping all the way up to level 9 to cover 5th level spells. We're going to pick up Mass Cure Wounds for the heal on our W. As an action, you choose 6 creatures in a 30 foot sphere, and give them a bath in healing energy, restoring 3d8 plus your charisma mod in hit points. And now we're making a massive leap to level 17 to unlock our R crescendo with Psychic Scream. Psychic Scream is going to make us flail on the etoile cords and let out a blast of energy, forcing intelligence saving throws on 10 creatures of our choice within 90 feet. If they fail, they take 14d6 psychic damage and are stunned. If they die from this damage, they're freaking head explodes. This is a little darker than you might have expected, but we've all been there when the full Magi's Death Cap Sona walks up and ends your day. Alright, now that we've completed the build, let's see how we did. First the good. This is a great representation of Sona. We got the damage, we got the heals, and we actually have a decent amount of magical utility. Now the bad. The only bad thing I think is most were probably expecting a full 20 bard and I just couldn't justify it. She's also a little squishy with all the sorcerer levels, but that definitely fits the character. So what'd you think? I've included a link to this build via D&D Beyond in the description below, as well as Amazon links to the books used in the build. If you enjoy this type of content, please consider supporting us on Patreon. We have a few awesome rewards, including access to our Discord community and monthly homebrew releases. We plan on turning out one league champion build every week, Thanks for watching, and hopefully we'll catch you on the Rift, or in the Forgotten Realms.